everybody, and welcome to Kick Conflict to the Curb, the place that growth-minded professionals come to discover the newest strategies on how to deal with bullies, narcissists, micromanagers, mediocre people, and to make sure that they or their direct reports feel heard and respected. I'm your host, Joyce Weiss, communication coach and queen of conflict resolution individuals and small groups come to me so that they reduce stress and improve their relationships. How do they do this, you may ask? Well, they transform from not knowing how to start a tough conversation to feeling confident using their voice without losing their cool. Well, I am excited to introduce you to our guest, Diane Bogino, who's been on this show many times, and I sure hope she continues coming back. We are going to learn how the importance of creating a conflict management plan. So here is our chance for me to introduce you to Diane. Over two decades of experience as a coach, behavioral scientist, entrepreneur, human behavior analyst, and working in a variety of industries, affords Diana perspective for business, building teams, changing cultures, and career development that is rare in the coaching field. In addition, she has been on both sides of the HR desk. Coaching includes clients from around the globe. As a founder and president of Performance Strategies Incorporated, she has collaborated with people from a variety of fields, including medical, education, hospitality, banking, manufacturing, pest control, government agencies, and more. In a former life, Diane was an actor and model. She appeared in a movie and numerous commercials and did a national spot for Delta Airlines. She also did voiceovers, print, and runway modeling. Here's some fun facts about Diane. At one time, she was Daffy Diane. She says that some people still think she is. She did this for birthday parties and she performed magic as herself, winning Magician of the Year for Greater Atlanta. Welcome to the show, Diane Bogino. Wow, I sound good, Joyce. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, you've been a returning guest. I'm not worried about this interview at all. <laughs> oh, you're very gracious. Listen, it's a pleasure to be with you anytime. Well, thank you. So before we start um, our, our conversation that by the way, it's going to be deep and fun for those of you watching, because I know this lady. Um, what? Tell us a little bit about your magician being the. I know to start with this, maybe I really don't know. How did you use magic in your in your work? Well. I wasn't doing this when I was doing magic. Um, I started out as the clown doing birthday parties because I just knew I wanted to work. And I also always wanted to have my own business. So I started with the clowning and then the magic grew and it got more serious with that. And I started doing magic as myself. And um, I entered a contest and I did a dance and did magic. I had a rabbit. I had doves and so I, I, they were gracious enough to give me the award. So it was great. Oh my God, that is awesome. And you could use that um, even today, maybe in your work. Oh, sure. And if Absolutely. you ever get bored, just <laughs> take out that rabbit. So <laughs> how, let's get right into it. Because this is important. We only have 20, well now 24 minutes, how we're going to do all this, but we are. How does better communication play a role in a conflict dynamic, a conflict management plan? Well, it's absolutely the foundation. And I think that companies think that they communicate enough, but I think it's almost impossible to over communicate when you are trying to instill conflict management or change management into a company. 
because not everybody hears the message and not everybody interprets it the same way. So constant communication is absolutely key when you're trying to make any type of change like that. And what do you, well, thank you for that. And what do you do when you, you have a resistant prospect and he or she just doesn't get the importance of communication, especially when you're talking about your, your conflict management plan? How Do you just walk away or do you try to inform them or what happens with that? Well, that's, that's one way, walking away, but that's not effective. And that's a great question, Joyce, because companies, if they would start, in addition to their conflict management program, a coaching program and teach their managers how to coach people, this would absolutely get them over the hurdle and help them help their people to be better at conflict management. In addition to some other solutions that come into play. And we can talk about those as we go through this. Oh, sure. Well, do you want to mention a couple of them now? Sure. I mean, yeah, well, I mean, yeah. since you well, brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's all my fault, Joyce, I know. Oh, oh it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing I think people probably don't ever think about is negotiation skills. So to have a training program around negotiation teaches people how to better um, settle conflict, how to give and take in any situation. It's not always about bar bartering something. It's about how can we make this situation work for us and for the entire company community that we're involved with. So negotiation skills are really important and putting them into your training program is an excellent idea. And this is what you do. You're not just giving. Yeah, that's that is that yeah. is great. That is great. Yeah. Look at if you negotiated, you probably negotiated these kids at those parties when you were a clown. <laughs> to, okay, okay, honey, sit down. They get better. No, that's but yeah. nego I didn't realize that about you. That's great to know. Yeah, they and the kids are a tough audience. <laughs> oh yeah, but you already know that, and that's why you can deal with the CEOs. And how can having a change management model in place form a structure for a conflict management plan? Well, first of all, having a change management model is essential if you really want to have effective change. For example, John Cotter has an eight-step model. It's simple. It's effective. You can put it in place. But it's a guide, and it's a guide to help you through the change. It won't get rid of chaos, and it won't get rid of conflict, but it will greatly reduce it. Mm -hmm. Building the conflict management into that system, and, and really there's some parts of it that are already there in that eight-step process, and, and there are many, many change management models. I just happen to like his. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's in the model, and once you put those two together and then integrate them, you really have a much better process and an easier time making change and reducing conflict. You're never going to get rid of it and you really don't want to. That's another secret, Joyce, is that some conflict is healthy and there's always going to be differing, differing in opinions and perspectives. And that's a good thing. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because on my website, I talk about healthy and unhealthy conflict. Because people do think, oh my God, what's wrong with our office? You know, we got to get rid of the conflict. Or you hear these, you know, speakers or coaches say, hey, I'm going to hear to get rid of it. Well, I would, you know, forget that, folks, because you're going to have it. Now, you mentioned the different steps that this uh, individual has. Could you give us one or two um, from his model? Well, uh, it does involve communication, it does involve planning. So those are things that are built into the model that uh, he has already established so that you can take those steps and integrate them. So it's right there. And there's just only eight steps. So he can, mm -hmm. uh, if you follow that model, there's another one called freeze and unfreeze, really simple. So you have something that uh, is like your organization might be stuck, is frozen, you unfreeze that. And then when you get it back together, you freeze it how you want it. Very wow. simple, but yeah. It's, it, could you give us an example of a client who you did the freeze and unfreeze? This is really. Yes, actually, I worked with a an executive team. 
uh, who was totally dysfunctional, they had a goal to reach a billion dollar mark in their business, mm -hmm. but everyone was at odds with each other. They were not respecting each other. In fact, a one person, the first time I interviewed him, he says, everybody's out to get me. They're stabbing me in the back. Well, that wasn't true at all. People actually respected him, but he just had some kind of perspective about this. So we did some team building. I administered assessments. We did coaching. They reached that billion dollar mark and have gone far beyond that simply because they learned to work better together and reduce wow. the conflict. Yes. Wow. What a good story that is for you to share with your clients. Like, hmm, what if she's done it? I think so. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Now, I know that you've got a um, career coach on your, your right next to your name, Diane Bodino. So how can career path programs help engage employees and reduce conflict and bullying? Love that question. Sorry, I do. So now da -da, the answer. Yeah. If an employee doesn't have goals and they don't have any place to go, and this is particularly true of the younger generation coming into the workforce today, they are not going to be engaged. You're not going to have the retention that you need. So you're going to lose profitability. If an employee has some perspective and goals, conflict is reduced as well. The coaching can enter into it, have a mentoring program. This helps reduce conflict. An employee that has a career path, and if you provide a career program, and it doesn't have to be anything expensive or elaborate, they are much happier, they are better engaged, and you'll keep that employee for a long time. And that goes into your succession planning. So it all feeds one into the other. So, Diane, I have many human resource professionals that uh, watch the show and, and they're my clients also. So if they're listening to this either live or, or later on. Could you give us, I mean, you mentioned mentoring, which mm -hmm. is huge. Um, yeah. What else would you suggest if they say, said to you, Diane, I'm HR, this sounds wonderful. I'd love to add career programs to help engage our, our in, um, employees. What else would you suggest? It, you, well, let me say this. A company may not, let's say HR gets excited about a career path mm -hmm. program, but the executive suite does not. Yeah. <laughs> Still, there can be training programs put into place where employees are taught to do this for themselves. This builds accountability. A manager who cares about their employees, you know, a manager needs to build in people to replace themselves because what's going to happen is they're going to, going to want to get promoted and there's not going to be anybody to take their place. And so they, they get stuck and they have to sit there until they either find somebody or groom somebody. Again, part of your succession planning. So HR can teach people how to be accountable for their own career. They, there are things that people can do for themselves. They don't necessarily have to find a mentor at their place of business. They can go out and find a mentor someplace else. Now, they can also pay a coach on their own, although a company really should pay for that if they're, you know, at a certain level, like at the director level mm -hmm. uh, and on uh, above that. But coaches are affordable. You and I are very affordable. I know I am. So people are, I think, are afraid of the expense of it. But if, if people would just do a little research, they can find someone to meet their budget and their needs. And, you know, Diane, I'm going to compare what I say to prospects when I say to them, what is it costing you not to resolve conflict? You could say the same thing, couldn't you? What is it costing you, um, HR pro or leader of a company, for not providing career guidance or a career path with your with your um, employees. And so what is it costing them? A lot because of the re of retention factor. If they lose employees, you know, as 
anybody that's in HR knows that it's expensive to replace any level of employee, but certainly at the higher levels, it's expensive to replace them. The retraining, uh, maybe running another job description, uh, you know, what all the things that are involved in trying to get a new person on board. So having that career path helps retain those employees. So it it's to everyone's benefit. Even if they don't have a trainer on site, let's say it's a small company and I like to deal with small companies. So that's sure. why I favor them. But um, there are trainers like you and I or other people that we know that we could even recommend that can come in and do training for you uh, either on site, off site, virtually mm -hmm. so that you provide uh, the what the employee needs to build their career. People don't seem to understand many things about building a career today, resilience and, and uh, the things that they can do for themselves it, and how the job search, if you're looking for a job, has changed. It's gone pretty high tech these days, but you got to stay in life and you got to stay in the game. I don't care what your age is or where you are in your career. Oh, absolutely. This is, and matter of fact, in the green room, or we call it the blue red room, <laughs> room on this show. In the blue red room, uh, Diane, you and I were talking about what we're doing in our own career at this stage in our life and how we are reinventing ourselves, not just because we should, but number one, we want to enjoy our life to the fullest, and we are. And yeah. that's because we're we're doing planning and career planning. It happens at all stages. For those of you who are a lot younger, this is the time to do it. And then you continue doing it because the career is going to change. The workforce is going to change. Your accountability at home, maybe you're going to have a sick relative. I'm not wishing this on anyone, but it's lifetime. So maybe we need to go together and create a, a program of lifetime from birth to retirement. That's right. Well, you know, that is something I do with my clients is I actually have them draw a timeline. Ooh. I have them put their age, their spouse's age and their children's age, if they have any mm -hmm. at the beginning. And we'll either, depending on the situation, work in either two, five or 10 year increments. And it really opens people's eyes to the factor that in oh five or 10 years, my children are going to be either teenagers that won't talk to me or out of the house, mm -hmm. totally, maybe even married. And then what are you going to do with your life? I think that as humans, we find it difficult to see the future and see where we will be or understand what can happen to us in a lifetime. Oh, I love that time chart. God, I did that when I got, oh God, when I received my master's degree in guidance and counseling, I forgot the power of that. Mm. So that's terrific that you do that. Yeah. That's, a, yeah. And they can now, write goals at, at the different stages so that they can see, well, you know, it's overwhelming because they try to see the end and everything right now, but you, you can't do that. It's a journey. Mm -hmm. So if you say, well, in two years, I can have this done. In five years, I can have this done. Then you can take it in and you can see how it can happen. Yes. One step at a time, one day at a time. All that <laughs> stuff makes sense. And if any of those, those of you who don't have patience in their DNA, your host has that same issue. And I have, that's probably, oh, you too, guest. So that's probably one of the biggest things I've learned uh, over, over all these years being, whether I was a motivational speaker, that part of my career is done now, totally a communication coach. It, it's the patience to get from one especially part of your career when you re-engineer. It's tough to do, but we need to do it. Now, um, bullies, mm -hmm. have you ever had any tough conversations who were colleagues, direct reports, leaders who were bullies, if you remember, and what was it? And if you could tell us how you resolved it. Yeah, maybe this isn't <laughs> the best way, but I had a boss who was a bully. Mm -hmm. And um, I got upset one day because he said something. And so he came into my office, closed the door, and he said, I think 
you misheard what I said. I said, no, I didn't. That is what you said. And I'll sit here and tell you that all day long, which was not good. But we became great friends after that because I stood up to him. But there are better ways to handle a conversation like that. And Joyce, you know, one one thing is to take it on yourself to try to understand people and different behavioral styles, like the narcissist, like the bully and what they're after. So when you find out what they're after and how they operate, how they function, how they think, then you can better navigate around them. So brilliant. So you've got to take time, figure, ask yourself the question, what do they really want? Mm -hmm. And then that's when you can decide and, and what to do and getting back to your boss. Yeah, you're saying, um, and you laughed about it, that maybe there's better ways. And sure there are. The result is though, that you were heard. The result is that I bet he didn't do that to you anymore. No, he did not. <laughs> so sometimes it, you think at the time, oh my gosh, I shouldn't have said that. And if the results aren't good, then you're probably right. But if so, eh, you could have softened it up. Who cares? It's all about the results. Yeah. And I need to say this one thing about this though. When we deal with a bully or narcissist, Diane, Sometimes we can't deal with them. It depends where they are on the chart. Mm. Do you agree or not? Oh, absolutely. Yes, there are different levels of, um, and I'm just going to call it mental illness, if you will, or dysfunctional sure. behavior, however you want to label it, whatever the situation is, there are different lev levels. And you do need to know when to back down or back off or take off because self-preservation and self-protection is first and foremost, always. Absolutely. And that's what I think we have to realize that, hey, Joyce, Diane are telling us that we could resolve this. Well, sometimes there are just times that you just can't, you have to walk away. Yeah. You know, thank you for that. Now, what is the, we're almost done. So let's leave something that, did, that, that powerful question for Diane. What is something in your toolbox that is your number one priority that you must do to keep your sanity. <laughs> well, I like to shut down at the end of the day and just like watch something mindless on TV. But one thing that helps me is to make that to-do list the night before, because then I can hit the next day with, you know, hit the ground running the next day. You're more organized. Uh, you're able to tackle things sooner better and stay that way throughout the day. And, and what I've done lately is I've started doing it on Sunday night for the whole week at one time. Now that doesn't mean things don't change. They do, mm -hmm. but that really helps my sanity for what I have left. I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that I, you know, Daffy, what what we call it, Daffy, that's what you said. Daffy Diane, that's right. Daffy Diane, I was going to say Daffy right. Duck, that wasn't right, Joyce. Yeah, but the, the whole idea of whether it's the, the end of the day to plan for the day, the beginning of the day to plan for the day, this is your toolbox. You're very yes. organized, and that's why, and I know this about you, Diane, you, you have a lot of goals, you've set a lot of goals, um, full disclosure that she and I do... Is that yours? Yeah, sorry about oh, that. Oh, okay, I'm good. That's fine. I thought you were really saying, yeah. So, it's Hollywood, so I have to take this. I'm kidding. Oh, that's fine. I'll wait. Uh, see what I mean, viewers? This lady, she is deep and serious. And wow, that fun part. Love that. Well, Diane, you continue making your goals. Before I let you go, I got to find out. I'm going to put down all of the places that people can find you. First of all, tell us what will, you know, what do you want to tell the viewers about you, about your services, and then obviously how they can reach you? Well, what Joy said is true that I have been on both sides of the HR. Or I have been on both sides. What is the deal with this? I have been on both sides of the HR desk in that I have hired people and I have been a job seeker. I know what it takes to 
put yourself out there, but I also know what it takes to make yourself visible and valuable when it comes to building a career or finding a job. And I love doing it and I love helping people have those aha moments and help them discover their own value. I love that. Thank you. And then, I mean, it's all there, but just in case people are listening, could you tell them how to connect with you on all just a few of the platforms that that you that you sent to me? Well, they can go, of course, to my website, performstrat.com. They can call me at 404-320-7834 or email me at Diane at Dianebogino.com. Easy enough. Yeah. Easy enough. Well, would you please come back again? I certainly will if you want to invite me after this oh. <laughs> unprofessional interview I just had. Yeah, right. <laughs> I will invite you. So I want to thank you. Never thank disappointed you, Joyce. with you. Thanks. My pleasure. So I hope that you enjoyed yourself as much as I did. Uh, we got so many ideas to put together or to talk to our leaders to find out uh, exactly how you use these strategies. And please share the, um, the recording with your leaders to say, hey, we could do this. Well, many people ask me, Joyce, what is one of the best benefits uh, for people hiring you as their coach? And I tell them that my clients discover how much it costs them not to resolve conflict. Relationships, money, inner peace, a better night's sleep, they're all important to me. So please, all you need to do is either call me, my phone number is on there, but I'll say it for those of you who are just listening, not watching, 248 681 5831. Make sure that you connect with me on LinkedIn and go to my YouTube channel and please subscribe. There are over 250 videos. Some of them are short, some of them are longer, and the live broadcasts are there. And it's very easy to connect with me. So until next time, I'm Joyce Weiss. Remember, you get what you tolerate. So now, go and kick conflict to the curb. Thanks so much for watching. Mm.